All right, next item of our presentation is Mr. Pinder is the first one on inclement weather procedures, just as it started to get cold. Good evening, uh, President Kelly, Vice President Harper, board members, and Dr. Kane. Um, for the record, my name is uh, Sid Pinder. I'm the Chief Operating Officer. And each year, we have the opportunity to go through um, how decisions are made um, concerning if we're going to have a 90-minute delay, um, if school is going to be dismissed early due to inclement weather, or if we're not going to have school at all. And I will tell you, it is, it's not an easy decision. Um, it's probably the most stressful part of my job. And as I tell my two daughters, sometimes you're a zero and sometimes you're a hero. Um, so when school's canceled to my kids, I'm a hero. And when they got to go to school, I'm that zero dad. So it's not easy uh, decision. But there's a lot of time and effort that goes into this. Um, and where we gather our information, we have AccuWeather, where we um, consult with actually a meteorologist that we could talk to on the phone that advises us of you know, what their prediction is of the weather coming in. We look at the National Weather Service. We look at all the local media outlets, Channel 11, Channel 2, Channel 16. Um, we also use the Weather Channel, and we're in communication with the Maryland Emergency Management Agency. We also look at Weather Underground website to give us that information. Some of the different forecast models that we look at, um, basically you will see the five that we, we choose, um, the North American uh, model, the global forecast, the rapid update cycle, the rapid refresh, and the European one. And basically when you look at the weather and you're talking about like a hurricane and you see all those squiggly lines going all over the place, those are the different models. And all that is, is a prediction. And we make our decision, and you'll see the timeline here in a few minutes. It's based on the information that we have at that current time. The weather will change. As we all know, we live right on the edge of the bay. As soon as it hits the bay, you could have snow up north and nothing down south, or you could have fog on town and nothing up north. Um, what we're doing is in the morning around 3.30, we have um, John Murdoch, uh, Mary Dawkins and Margaret Ellen Kamenovich that are at work and they're beginning to call <coughs> the Maryland State Police Barrack to see if they're uh, noticing any um, weather on the roads because the troopers are out patrolling the roads at those times. We would contact the Sheriff's Office and talk to the duty sergeant to see what's occurring so we can get some insight from them. We also work closely with DES, uh, Department of Med Emergency Services, and then we, we discuss with uh, Public Works and also Parks and Rec. And going through this, the reason we're contacting Parks and Rec, they are the group that cleans our parking lots, our custodians assist them with shoveling the sidewalks. Um, but also, we're trying to figure out what time they're coming out in the morning. So if Public Works is not coming out until 6 o'clock in the morning, we're already behind schedule. So we, we talked to them the night before to get a feeling of, hey, are you starting at 5 or are you going to come out at 4? The State Highway Administration is out. And as you know, they're dumping salt everywhere. The county roads, all they're putting down is sand, and sometimes there's a little bit of a mixture of calcium in there, but for the most part, it's sand. Um, we do have Queen Anne's County uh, spotters. We have bus drivers, and I'll show you this in a few minutes, <clears throat> that are in different geographical regions around the county so that they can tell us what's occurring and ride around their area. Um, we uh, use the state highway traffic cameras, especially right now with the Bay Bridge. I think I'm kind of glued to it every morning, looking at it, monitoring the traffic. But we also use the exterior cameras of all the schools <coughs> to see if the sidewalks are clear, um, parking lots are clear. And I also use the exterior cameras at Stevensville Middle School to kind of monitor the traffic on Route um, 18 going through there with the Bay Bridge to see how well that's flowing. So if you look up there or look at your laptop, you'll see the different dots across the um, Queen Anne's County. And like I said, it's a very unique county because it goes all the way from the Chesapeake Bay to the Delaware line. Um, each of those dots is either where a road sensor is that gives us a temperature reading um, or we can do a visibility reading there. So in the morning, if it's foggy, you know, we might be getting a case of three mile visibility reading, it might be down to half a mile visibility reading. So we try to pick those locations where there's sensors and we can actually um, get that information back to us. Obviously, there's not going to be one 
in every part of the county. This is where we have our weather spotters. Um, they're bus drivers, county and um, contracted bus drivers that live in a diff different geographical regions. And we contact them um, when we're expecting uh, snow, freezing rain, just to get out there at four o'clock in the morning and see what they're experiencing. Because a lot of times when you're talking to the state troopers or the deputies, somebody's definition of, hey, the road's not too bad, might not be the same definition of, hey, for me, of the road's not too bad. Um, so we like to get out and get a wealth of information to make this decision. Here's the timeline for how everything occurs. At 3.30 in the morning, that's when the transportation department starts gathering information every day. We like to make a decision by 4.40 in the morning. And some people go, well, hey, that's a little bit early. Um, we have a lot of students that start getting ready for school at five o'clock. And believe it or not, we've been able to work our first, uh, where our first students board the bus, it used to be about 5.40 in the morning. We've been able to cut that off and shave that off to six o'clock in the morning. So we like to make that decision. Um, after we gather all the information, I contact Dr. Kane, advise her, this is the decision we would like to go with. Um, you know, please move forward with us. Uh, when that decision is then made, um, it goes out at five o'clock and I'll show you the different methods that we notify um, the parents and students. And then if you're looking at seven o'clock in the morning, everybody thinks, okay, well, if you do a 90 minute delay, you got a long time to wait. You, you really don't. By seven o'clock, you need to make a decision if you're going to close schools for the day because students start boarding the buses 30 minutes later. And once that process starts, there is no turning back um, because what you're going to have, if you decide you want to turn back, you're going to have students standing there waiting for buses that are never coming. And you're also putting a lot of the students at risk to get injured um, by cars traveling up and down the road. It would be just a total nightmare to make that decision after um, those times that are allotted there. I'll say that probably the most stressful one is at 10 a.m. You have to make the decision if you're going to close school early. Um, because of snow or freezing rain. And there's a lot that play into that, uh, plays into that. Mainly, you have to feed the students lunch for that day. Pre-K is pretty stressful because those students usually drive home on another bus at midday. Now all of a sudden, they're going to ride the bus that they came in on. Um, and that tends to be a challenge, making sure that they're getting on the bus. Also, you need to find out how many field trips you have occurring. Um, two years ago, we had some across the bridge, and I'm sorry, we're at Chesapeake College, and we were able to get them back in time. But you have to look at all that information. You have the CTE school, where you're transporting students from uh, Kent Island to Queen Anne's County High School. You have the fire school, and we also have our special needs buses that go across the bridge. Um, so at 11, I'm sorry, 10 o'clock, we make that decision. And just to kind of give you the normal times at 11:30, the pre-k students leave those particular schools listed i will say it's worked out very well having sullersville um, and churchill be full day now pre-k so we don't have to deal with that issue during the daytime um, at 12 o'clock you can see where pm pre-k students begin to be picked up and brought into school um, 1 to 115 that's when pre-k begins for the schools listed and then our first tier dismissals, Ken Island, Queen Anne's, Mattapeak Middle School, Sellersville Elementary School, Sellersville Middle, and Stevensville. <coughs> then we use those same buses to do the second tier dismissal. As I was mentioning earlier, you know, it's just not a simple, we're gonna close school in the middle of the day. I forgot we have, I'm sorry, I have anchor points on there. I'm sorry, it's a rise now. Um, the fire school, we have the ninth grade annex. We have the athletic events, and we also have the late buses that we have to coordinate with. How to receive notice of the decision being made. Most people have signed up for a school messenger. It's where a phone um, call goes out, a text or an email, and we can actually track how long that process takes. And we can actually go back if a parent says, hey, it wasn't called at this number, we can go back, okay, it was tried at this particular time, or you're not registered on the program. Um, I want to say, uh, don't quote me on this, but about eight to 10 minutes, I believe it is, 
in the whole process is, is going through the first round. Um, we also use our website. Uh, we use the Facebook page, QAC TV. Um, we have the TV stations listed there, and then we have the radio stations that we put it on. Mr. Strait is kind enough to do our school <coughs> messenger, also our website and Facebook. And then I have um, the transportation department makes the phone calls to the TV stations and the radio station. And that part there is stressful because a lot of times you're either talking to a, um, an individual that might be their first time at the news station and they're asking you for a code, you give them the code and you say Queen Anne's County Public Schools, they may just put down Queen Anne's School. So you have to watch the TV to make sure they've entered the correct um, description of if it's closed or if it's 90 minutes. Code red and code blue, those are um, codes that we use when uh, school is canceled. Those are for employees. Code blue, you can use liberal leave. Essential employees still report to work. Code red, you can stay in bed and you know school is closed for central office staff. It's you know too bad to get in. We get this question quite a bit. Um, why schools are not open in zones? For instance, last year it seemed to be we were stuck in a pattern where it was only snowing from Churchill uh, up to Crumpton and there was nothing on Kent Island. Well, with the two-tier bus system, we um, use buses at Sellersville Middle School, Sellersville Elementary School, then for the second tier, they go to Churchill or they come to Centerville. Same thing on Kent Island. Those buses do Kent Island first tier. Second tier, they also stay on Kent Island, but some of them come back to Graysonville and also um, Centerville. If we were to, able to do it in zones, we would have to get additional buses, which is a... Uh, pretty uh, financial, uh, big financial obligation. And other factors to consider, each day we have about 466 students to drive to school every day. And we're talking about st students that just began, um, you know, just got their learner's permit, I'm sorry, driver's license. And then we also have to rely upon Queen Anne's County Public Works, Centerville Public Works, and the State Highway. Like I said, the State Highway is out there 24-7. It's the other groups that we have to rely on. What time are they coming out? Same thing with Parks and Rec. Um, if they're coming out at six o'clock, we're already behind the eight ball. Home, homes and business owners removing snow from the sidewalk, sidewalks. In the town of Centerville, I, I can tell you most of our students walk to the high school and you have to take that into account. Have the sidewalks been clear for them to get to the schools? That's another big issue that we run into. Um, listed here are the school delay and closing uh, committee. Um, we meet once a year with um, parents, contracted bus drivers, principals, uh, board members, the Maryland State Police, the Queen Anne's County Sheriff's Department, um, Centerville PD, to try and just get a feel for how things went for that particular year. You always get the comment, well, why don't we do two hours? Why don't we do what, an hour? And I'll be honest with you, when you start separating it into just one hour and then you want to do two hours, believe me, it gets very confusing because it's hard enough to know already when it's going to be 90 minutes delay, delay for time being picked up for the school bus. Um, we bring that question up every year just to see uh, if anybody has any different opinion on it, how they feel about it. And every year it seems to be they like the 90 minutes. Um, the other thing you'll hear is, well, if you get two hours, that gives you a little bit of extra dry time for the snow and all the melt. Half an hour is not that much for us. I mean, it really isn't. Listed below are the um, number of closings, early dismissals, and delays that we've had. As you can see, there's no rhyme or reason. It is just that weather pattern that you get stuck in. Um, there for several years, um, usually it snows, it warms up, and we're good to go. For the past several years, it's been, it snows, it stays below 32 degrees, and we're stuck for a couple days. So as you can see, each year is just a little bit different. So in conclusion, you know, I wanted to demonstrate all the information that is um, taken in and relayed to us from various agencies. And again, it's not something that is just taken uh, lightly. It's a lot of thought put into it. And some days there's some very happy people and some days, you know, there's not, you know, happy people. But 
I'll say this, the safety of the students come first, um, employees and bus drivers, and we try to always keep that um, in the back of our minds. Any questions or comments or concerns? My one comment would be, not this term, but previous term, I would get calls when they did shut it down, complaining, why did you, when, you know, babe, it's a daycare problem. My 100% feeling is error on the side of safety. Mm -hmm. And, you know, this plan, I think, is excellent. You got a tough job, and I'd rather see the schools 90 minutes late or closed than take a chance anytime, even though it might be an inconvenience to some parents because there is issues with daycare and kids being home, but safety's got to be a primary issue. We're, we're moving this many children in school buses. I mean, I, you know, I would back that up if it turned out to be an 80 degree day in February. Yeah, we, we take that in consideration, and we, if we can make a decision the night before, we do. But that, again, is not an easy decision. I mean, if we know the temperature is going to be below, like, you know, 32 and stay in the 20s, and there's not been a whole lot of melting that day, well, that's an easy decision. Right. Let's just go ahead and call it so you can get, you know, you a lot of back care. roads. But, yeah, um, that doesn't occur every time. Right. So, and I've seen some counties call it the night before, and nothing happens the next day. So. Have that. Yeah. <laughs> the fog's tough in Queen Anne's County because, Southernville and Canal are two different. Centerville, and, well, even close to rivers. Yep. It can be Centerville can be fogged in. It can be nice and or Queenstown and vice versa. It's it's tough. It is tough. It's very airy fields in here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mr. Yeah. Mr. Pinter, yes, uh, 2013, 2014, wasn't that the really bad winter we had? And wasn't there like a pipe yeah. burst at was it Churchill? Churchill or, Elementary yeah, School. Yeah, remember in the middle we of the were blizzard. sitting in this, we were sitting here freezing, mm -hmm. and meeting, great. talking about how our schools were closed. Yes, it was. Um, that was a tough winter. Yes, that was a Sunday night. I remember that well. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Pinter. I, I wanted to be sure that we emphasize, I'd like to emphasize to the parents that if you're watching, just remember 3.30 in the morning, the process starts to figure this out most of the time. A lot of work goes into that decision. So I hear a ton of complaints all the time. So if they don't understand, um, it, they can learn about it and to watch this on, t on the television. And if you hear about this and you get complaints from your, your friends, just remind them and let them know to get on here, watch this, this particular presentation. We give it every year at the beginning before the snow starts um, and, and just watch it and figure out what goes into it. You can see the hassle, um, the difficulty it is to make decisions for a, a county that's spread this wide. If you go on our website and go into the transportation link, the uh, information is all there of how the decisions are made. So we, we keep that posted and updated. Great, and and definitely uh, get on this the school messenger system. You, you know, it's it's hard to, you know, five o'clock in the morning to get a phone call, wake you up just to tell you you can go right back to sleep. But um, it's it's a great way to find out what's going on in the school for this and, and other items too. Thank you, Mr. Bennett. Thank you.